Hey folks, Zivak here, and I've got some great news regarding Battle Kid 2. I finished the final boss a few days ago, and so we're in the home stretch now. I just wanted to make a video as it's been a while. In this video, I'm going to talk about and showcase some issues that I've resolved from the demo. I'll also be giving you a sneak peek at some of the manual, and I'll end it with the label art. Yep, those aspects are indeed done, so let's get into it. The first thing I have here is a little stat screen just to give you an idea of how big the game is. As you can see, there are over 650 rooms right now, about 100 more than Battle Kid 1, quite a few enemies and boss fights in the game as well. The next thing I want to get into is some things from the demo that were commented about, so let's get the game on screen here. Okay, so here we are in a save room here. Um, first up, I want you to direct your attention to the HUD. Uh, one of the things I took out was the jump counter, which people had complained about, like it was so distracting, so not a big deal there. Now I'm going to use the save here, and you can see that your password is now generated for you. It's a bunch of dashes right now, as I don't actually have the system in place. And then to the right of that, you have a little skull with a couple of zeros there, and that's going to be your death counter password. Um, so basically what you'll have to do is input your password and then optionally put in your death counter password if, you know, you want to. Um, I don't know if there's a better way I could really, you know, represent that on the screen. Um, it'll, I'll probably have to explain it in the manual for people, uh, you know, who don't get this video. But basically your uh, death counter will be input in hexadecimal, um, which is really um, for the sake of easy programming for me. Because having you, you know, input the digits and then converting back to, you know, an actual hex number is kind of tricky. So, alright, let's go outside here. And another thing that uh, some people had said was um, they were concerned about the actual wall grip controls. Um, I have a new option in here, which is in the HUD, which... You know, there's one thing I don't think people knew about in the demo was how to actually bring this up. You have to pause the game, then press select. Um, it's in one, it's in the README, although I updated the README a little bit later, like about uh, six hours after I uploaded the demo, and I think there are some sites that had the old uh, demo archive. But anyway, um, people were concerned about having the wall grip and the A button together, um, or rather if the A button was being held, that it ignores it. And let me just show you something here. Um, I picked this location because it has these tall walls. If you do it with um, with the, just the A button, then all you're really doing is having the A button be your main means of control. So you just keep tapping the jump button like this and holding left into the wall, and you can climb really, really quickly. That's what I was trying to go for with it. But if you uh, turn this on, you can do it regardless whether the A button's held on or not. He'll always grip. But the thing is... Um, you either have to, you know, jump and press left, jump and press left, and you can scale, you can still scale pretty quickly, but it's kind of, I don't know, cumbersome? I don't think that's the best word to use for it. Um, it. It's the way it used to be, actually, but I didn't like it, so that's why I came up with the idea to use the A button, which would ignore the grip. Because doing it this way, you know, if, if you're pressing into the wall, you're climbing really, really jittery like that, and likewise, if you're holding down, you're like very, very slowly descending, whereas, turn this back on, you can kind of do things like this. So, it's something that I, you know, it's an option, but, um, you know, I hope players would get used to having it with the A button, because you can do it really quickly. I mean, I have been testing it so that, you know, if you want to do it that way, that's fine. Um, you should be able to get through the areas without much problem. But, um, this way is just quicker. At least, at least that's what I was going for. So I'm going to stop here. Okay, another little quickie is we're here in the intro stage. You might also notice that up top on the HUD, uh, there are things not shown, like the uh, boss skulls and teleporters, because um, they're not really relevant to this area. So let's go in here. And as you can see here, we've got some new uh, cutscene portraits done. These were done by an artist named Armin Mardirosian. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Armin, if you're watching. Um, hopefully people can tell that this character is a female now and not... Um, but some people have thought that it was a male from the old art. I don't know why, but... Um, so let me just, there's Timmy there. So I just wanted to show these off. Uh, I'm going to cut this. Okay, the last things I'm going to show now are what to expect in the manual and finally the label artwork. So let's take a look at the manual here. In this manual, all the enemies are drawn. 
They were also drawn by Armin, who I just mentioned when I showed the new cutscene portraits. Depicted here are six enemies, all of which are seen in the demo. The left column has the Chrome Drone, Razor Drone, Bouncy Ball, then the Eye Guy, Eye Sniper, and Gunner Drone. Let's take a look at the next page here. And again, I think this is just some great art here, all in all. Um, on this page, we have the Tri-Gunner Drone, Pickaxe Chuck, which is one of my favorites out of all of the uh, drawings he did. The Sklungy, that's spelled with a Q, not a K. Uh, Zigzag Xanders, Roundabout Urchins, and also returning are the Immortal Jellies. I know they don't actually appear in the demo, but I did show them off in early BK2 video. And I'll show one more page here. On this page, you can actually see the nice golem and a little silhouette of the second boss. What is it? You'll have to play the game to find out. And finally, something I've been wanting to show off for a while now, but restrain myself. The game's label art. This label was done by an artist named Metal Hanzo, who was a great artist. He was great to work with, and I like how this came out very much. So let's pull this up here. I'm just going to let this pan down and up. But yeah, we've got a lot of my favorite enemies shown on here as well as our two antagonists of the game. For those who watch the BK1 intro scene, both of these characters are actually on there, along with the prominent spiky-haired character, but they are revealed in this game. Um, I'm not going to say their names, because I don't want to do any spoilers just yet. But, uh, yeah. So, I hope you like how this came out. I certainly did. So anyway, from here, I've just been fine-tuning things. I'll probably be writing up the game's credits and doing optimizations where I can. I hope that I can at least finish the game before the year is over. If all goes well, perhaps a release could happen within the next two to three months. But I will certainly announce that when I know more. Thanks for watching.